In this video, we're going to use user parameters and logic to update a feature pattern on a design. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, I want to take a little bit of a trip down user parameter lane. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at three different designs and we're going to look at how they update based on changing user parameters. Now, this is a bit of a tricky topic, so we're only going to be making one of these examples, but you can download all three from the description in the video. So first example here, we've got this sort of rectangular pattern. We've got vertical bars inside of this frame. If we go to modify and change parameters, let's go ahead and pull this out of the way. If I modify the length of the part, so you can see here it's currently eight inches. That's the inside size based on the pattern length. And then we've got the overall dimensions of the part. Now this one here, if we modify this value to say 16, it updates and there are more instances of the pattern. You can see the pattern number here of 14 updates. If we change it to eight inches, you can see it drops down to six. So this is one of the basic examples. The next example is a hole pattern. You can see these are threaded holes. And if, again, we go to modify and change parameters, we modify things like the overall length of the plate. If I say make it 400 by 200, then you can see that the pattern updates. We've got eight instances in the length direction and four in the width direction. If we modify this to 800, it's gonna increase the length and now we've got 16. And there's a little bit of logic here because we're using the floor logic operator that allows us to basically round down to the next lowest number. So 16 is going to be the number of instances at 800. But if I go to 799 and rebuild that, you can see it drops to 15. It also increases the space between the pattern. And this is because some of these operators such as floor or seal are going to either round up or down based on these values. So this is one of the tricks to using the logic. Let's look at the last example. Now, this one here is a gate. We've got some two by fours building the frame and then we've got some gate. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to modify and change parameters. And again, we've got things like the gate length, the gate height, the board thickness, the board width, and we've got the spacing of the board. And then we've got this board number. Now, this logic is a little bit different because we're using the round operator. Now, instead of going down to the lower value using uh, the floor or up to the higher value using the ceiling, we're using round to round the number to the next closest value. And we're also taking gate length divided by board width. Then we're dividing all of that by one and a half and we're rounding that. So if I change this to say 72 inches, the gate's gonna get longer, the number of instances changes to 12. If I change it to 36 inches, now we've only got six. If I change it to 38 inches, we have the same number, but the spacing increases. If I change it to 42, we're now adding an extra pattern. So you can see that with logic, we're able to do some pretty cool things with the design and get them to update. So the one that we're gonna be creating is the whole pattern because it's the easiest to set up. So let's go ahead and create a new design. We're gonna be using the default metric units, and we're gonna start by creating our user parameters. So if you've never created user parameters before, I have some ideas for doing a user parameter overview, but if you just follow along, you should have no problems. So when we create a new user parameter, we'll simply hit the plus icon and we need to enter the name. It's important to note that we can't have spaces here. So the first one that we're gonna do is plate length, and we can either do plate and then a capital L for the second word, or we can do an underscore. And these are gonna be the two main ways in which you're gonna break up the name of your user parameter. For the expression, we're gonna start at 400 and the units are millimeters, so we simply hit enter. We can see here that the expression is 400, that's what we entered. The evaluated value is 400 because there's no mathematical logic or operators. And we can create a new one called plate width. So again, underscore, width, and we're gonna set this at 250. Next, we want a pattern offset. So the holes are gonna be set in from the side some amount. So what I'm gonna call this is my pattern underscore offset. This is gonna be another millimeter value, and I'm gonna simply say 25 millimeters. 
We're going to use this twice, so it's going to keep the whole pattern 25 millimeters in from the left side and 25 down from the top. Next, we're going to add another one. And in this case, we have to decide between the pattern length, you know, the overall um, number of instances that are going to happen over the length of the pattern, and we have to think about the distance of the pattern. So I'm going to start with the distance, and I'm simply going to use PL for pattern length and distance. And this is going to be a value that is an expression. Now the expression is not just a numerical value that we're entering, we're actually going to use some of the other values. So we're going to start with a bracket, then we're going to start typing plate and we want to use plate length. You can see it presents us here with two options. Plate length and we're going to do a minus and we're going to start another bracket, two times the pattern offset and then we're going to close both of those brackets off. So you can see this evaluates to 350. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying the pattern offset, which is 25 millimeters, is how much we're setting in from the left-hand side. But when we start to think about these patterns, we have to account for that offset or that spacing on both ends. So this is where this 350 millimeters comes in. So essentially we're starting 25 millimeters in from the edge of the plate, and we're only going to be 25 millimeters short of the other end. We're going to do the same thing in the width distance. So I'm going to say PW distance, and we're going to follow the same flow. We're going to start a bracket. This time we're going to use plate width, and we're going to subtract out two times the pattern offset. Close both of those brackets, and again, you can see it's 200. The main reason that we want to do it like this is because we want to account for these user parameters. If we decide that we want to change the pattern offset to a smaller number, say 10 millimeters, both of these values are going to update according to that, rather than manually putting in 50 millimeters into this section. So let's reset that to 25. The next bit that we have to take care of with the parameters is the number of instances for our pattern, and that's where it gets a little tricky. So far, everything we've done have been manually entering numbers, in this case, a metric number. We've also used some equations or some expressions. So we're taking these values, the pattern length or the plate length and the pattern offset. And now what we need to do is we need to think long and hard about the units. So there are actually two units that are commonly used for patterns. One is pieces and one is no units. Now, I find that no units is the best option. Uh, pieces doesn't really come up if you create a pattern. And if there's ever any question, what you can do is create the feature and then check in the model parameters. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a parameter for the pattern instance length. So I'm going to call this pat i length. So the pattern instance length. And here is where we need to use our expression. So let's take a look at the Fusion 360 help, which you can also find in the description of the video. When we look through the following functions that can be used in Fusion 360, one thing that we don't have is an if else statement. Now, logic using an if else statement can be very powerful, but we don't have that available, so we have to think of another way. So when we look at these expressions, we have floor, which is unitless, and it goes to the next lowest whole number, seal, which is a ceiling, and it goes to the next highest number, round, which will round to the closest whole number. So for example, if we're at 1.5, it'll round to 2. If we're at 1.4, it'll round down to 1. Then we also have some other expressions that can be handy in cases like this, such as max or min. Now, these are conditional, where it's taking a look at two different evaluated expressions, and it's figuring out which one is the maximum or which one is the minimum. So if you are trying to use some logic without the if-else statements, then you can start to play around with creating expressions using floor and seal or round, and you can even plug those back into things like max. So with some basic understanding of these available functions, let's hop back into Fusion and let's go ahead and add the expression. So the way that we're going to do this again is we're going to use floor, which is going to round down, and we need some brackets. So we're going to start the bracket and everything inside of these brackets is going to be rounded down to the next lowest whole number. So with floor, what we're going to do is we're going to take our plate length. So we're going to find plate length and we're going to divide it. So what we're going to do in this case is divide it by 50, but you'll notice the equation is still red. And the reason for that is because what we're doing is we're taking a length, which is millimeters, 
and we're dividing it by just a number, 50. So the output or the expression of that is going to be metric. So the way that we fix this is we either take the entire thing and divide it by one millimeter. The other way that we can do this is simply divide the length by 50 millimeters and that'll cancel out the units. We can see the value is expressed here as eight. And next we're gonna do the same thing in the width direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over so we can see the one we just used. So we're gonna do, follow the same thing, P-A-T, I for instance, and W-I-D-T-H. You can call these whatever you want, but try to make sure that the names are reasonable so you can rep you can understand what they are when you're trying to use them. So again, floor, this time we're gonna do plate width divided by 50 millimeters. Another thing to consider is that 50 millimeters is used in two places. We might want to make sure that we actually use a, an expression or user parameter. And you'll note here when I type that in, I didn't automatically select the no units and it, it comes in as millimeters, so this isn't gonna work. We have to cancel it out and we have to always be sure that we are using the correct units. So again, PAT, I, width, and there's no way for us to really go back and edit, um, completely edit the expression to where we can change those units. At least I don't believe there is. So we wanna make sure that we just get it right here. So again, plate width divided by 50 millimeters, close the brackets. So you can see here, if I click on the expression, I can edit that. But if I click on the units, I'm not able to change those units. So if you do make a mistake like that, you do have to go back and recreate it. Now we have everything that we need to model this part. So we're gonna start with a rectangle and I'm gonna use a center point rectangle because I like to center all my designs about the origin whenever possible. With the dimension dialogs highlighted, we're gonna start typing in our plate width and simply hit that, hit tab, and then we're gonna do plate length and hit enter. So you can see that it was a little bit larger than the screen, but now we have our full part. We're gonna use extrude bring it up whatever distance you want. In my case, I'm gonna go 50 millimeters. Then I'm gonna sketch on the top face. You could have done everything in a single sketch, but I do find it easier sometimes to divide these things up. And that way we can use a feature to pattern and we don't have to use the same sketch twice. It doesn't really matter in this case, but if you're setting up a complex design, make sure you think through the process of where the sketch entities need to be. So we're gonna dimension this from the corner and this is gonna be our pattern offset. Now you'll notice that all of our different user parameters start with P. So if that is problematic, you can use other letters that are inside of it, for example, O. And the only one with O is the pattern offset. It can be a little bit easier for us to find. I also wanna give a dimension to the circle and I didn't put a user parameter for that, but I'm gonna say 25. Then we're gonna use extrude and I'm gonna use through all or to object. And again, the reason we're doing this is because if we happen to change the thickness of the plate, we want the whole depth to update. I'm not gonna use the threads in this example, but surely you can go ahead and add those threads if you wish. What I wanna do here is create a rectangular pattern. We can do this based on faces or features. In this case, I'm gonna use features since it's this extrude. The direction is gonna be along the edges or the default x-axis, and I'm gonna start pulling these out just so I can see them. Now, the quantity in the length direction is gonna be our pattern instance length. So we we're gonna select that, note that it is unitless. And then for the distance, it's gonna be our pattern length distance, that PLD. And then for the quantity on the width, we're gonna do our pattern. And remember that you have to look for the unitless one here. And this is why naming them something logical is so important. And then this is going to be our PLD in the uh, our PL distance, or I'm sorry, PW distance for the pattern width. All right, so you'll notice that this has a problem. And if this has a problem, if it means that one of our instances has gone off the edge. And the reason for that is because the distance type is set to spacing and we need to use extent. And the reason we need to use extent is because that is how we set up our formula. So again, we're gonna redo this and this is gonna be PL distance. So we're gonna use PL distance here and this is PW distance. And you can see now everything is on the plate. So this is a great way for us to build out 
functionality using the user parameters. And now we have complete control over this. If we make this 800 millimeters, the pattern is going to update. If we make it a little bit narrower, let's say, remember we're dividing by 50. So if I say 249, it's going to reduce the number of instances because remember it is using floor to round down. If instead we used CEIL, it would round up to the next number and that would keep it at five. So these functions can be played around with to get the desired result. But remember, we do not have access to if else statements. So that's going to be the overview on how to create a user parameter based design that can update the pattern instances based on the functionality or logic built in. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you'd like to see more examples like this, also let me know. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.